the dough holomorphic curves. Okay, so if, if x is a smooth manifold and j is endomorphism of the tangent bundle, which squares to minus the identity, then, uh, then we call this an almost complex manifold. Okay, and J is chosen because it's, it's the next letter in the alphabet after I, and you're supposed to think of J as multiplication by I. So when you think of J as multiplication by I, you realize that um, J endows the tangent bundle with, uh, with the structure of a complex vector space, and, and, and conversely, um, a complex vector space structure on the tangent bundle is the same thing as just choosing this endomorphism J. Okay, and Okay, so in particular, this can only happen in even dimensions. All almost complex manifolds are even dimensional. Right, so if we have a map from one of these to another, this is called pseudo holomorphic. Uh, when it's derivative, that's going from the tangent bundle of x to the pullback the tangent bundle of x prime uh, is complex linear. In other words, um, df composed, I guess, on this side by j prime is the same as df composed on the other side with j. Okay, so this isn't such a, in, in general, such a useful PDE to be studying because it's overdetermined. So this is, is equation overdetermined unless uh, well okay so there's some trivial cases but um, the only interesting one is when uh, the dimension of x the dimension of the domain is 2 Okay, in that case, um, it's called a pseudo holomorphic curve because um, X is a surface, it's a two-dimensional real manifold, but a one-dimensional complex manifold, so it's called a curve. Um, and this, this interesting case, when the dimension of X is two, uh, this equation star is elliptic. And, and what that means is that uh, we can expect to find a, find a reasonable finite dimensional space of solutions. And moreover, that in favorable cases that the space of solutions will be a, a sort of reasonable finite dimensional, finite dimensional space. Okay, um, so there's a, there's a fact which is that all um, two dimensional uh, almost complex manifolds are, um, are Riemann surfaces. Um, th that is, they have uh, local, local analytic coordinates, i.e. locally equivalent to C with its standard complex structure. Um, and the way to prove that is to use ellipticity of the equation. So um, you use ellipticity of the equation for, um, uh, I guess, maps from, uh, maps from X to C, analytic maps, pseudo-holomorphic maps from X to C. If you produce, produce enough of, of those, you get uh, these charts. Okay, so. The holomorphic 
curb is a do the holomorphic map. From a Riemann surface. Okay, so um, I, I hope I hope I'm not. Uh, well, I, I may be swiftly corrected by the audience, but as as far as I uh, can see right now. These these objects are are um, are completely useless as individual or discrete objects. To do anything at all um, with them, you have to um, study the moduli space of, of of all of them. Put, put them into a family. Any application? Uh, requires understanding the space of, of all pseudo holomorphic maps. Yes? Pseudo-holomorphic map. So a map is pseudo-holomorphic when the differential is complex linear. Does that answer the? Well, they they will chat back if it didn't answer. Okay, so I will I will write the pseudo-holomorphic cur curve equation in in this form here, but um, it's the same equation as before. So this is the. Modulized space. Okay, so 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 what um, what structure does this have beyond being a set? So so first uh, we could put a topology. On the space of. On, on the set of holomorphic maps. And, well, I guess there are two topologies you might consider. So first, um, you, could, you could equip it with a compact open topology. So, um, what's an open set and a compact open topology? Well, it's a, if you take a compact subset of the domain, and an open subset of the, of the target, then the space of maps which, which send that compact set of the domain inside uh, the open subset of the target is supposed to be an open subset of the, uh, yes? Here? Uh, yes. So, so, the, so the question is what did I, what did I write here? Uh, what is this equation? Um, yeah, so, so du, um, let me write it over here. D U is a map from the tangent bundle of C to the pullback of the tangent bundle um, of X. These are complex vector spaces, and this is a real linear map. So it has a, a decomposition into uh, a unique decomposition as a sum of a, of a C linear map and a, uh, a C conjugate linear. Map, um, and so the assertion that du is holomorphic is the same as saying this one is zero. Okay, so I, I just gave a, a definition of the compact. Yes. Um, 
sorry, you, you mean? Oh, well, so, so, so maybe, okay, first of all, maybe I want some more topology on the surface. I, maybe I want a domain other than the sphere. Or the, let's see. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, 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 this, this, is a, this is a Roman seat on a blackboard, board, not, a, not the complex plane, that's just the, the curve, C for curve, not C for complex. Okay, so, so I gave this uh, definition of the compact open topology, which probably people have uh, forgotten by now. It doesn't matter because um, it's, it's, it's perhaps better thought of as, as the topology of uniform convergence on compact subsets. Okay, so usually, um, Usually our curve C is, is compact. I, I, I might even, I might even, uh, I might even say it's always compact. Um, so this is just the topology of uniform convergence. Okay, and there's a remark, which is that um, there, there's this, this topology satisfies a very nice property, which is that uh, for any a uh, pair of topological spaces. Um, so you call them A and B, uh, where A is locally compact. Um, map from any topological space to um, that of continuous maps um, from A to B. Continuous in the compact open topology if and only if um, the associated map uh, Z times A to B. is continuous. So if you come up with any other topology on, any, any other complicated way of defining a topology on uh, the set of continuous maps um, with this property, um, property that uh, a map to it is continuous if and only if uh, the, this, this associated map is continuous, then that topology you defined is the contact, compact open topology. Okay, so, so another way uh, you, you might topologize this is using, um, well, the topology of, of um, the infinity convergence on compact subsets. So that's a much stronger topology. A priori, it's, so it's, it's a much stronger topology on the space of all maps. On the subspace of holomorphic maps, uh, it turns out it's the same. So proposition, um, uh, the C0, the C infinity topologies on the space of holomorphic, the set of holomorphic maps Coincide, and this is uh, a consequence of um, two facts: a consequence of the elliptic regularity, and the Gromov-Schwarz lemma. Um, as far as I know. I think we actually don't care so much about this result um, in the sense that um, this topology number two is the right topology to use. It's sort of a coincidence that the same as the compact open topology. But anytime we work with the space, um, 
we're not likely to care about the compact open topology. I'm erasing the board, so now is a good chance. Ah, uh, yeah. So, right, so what does it mean for the uh, pseudo holomorphic map equation to be overdetermined? Um, right, so I guess. They're probably, um, they're probably some technical PDE way of, of formulating it. But, but I guess all I really mean is there are more, um, they're more, they're more equations than there are variables. So a pseudo holomorphic map from, you know, to, to, to the target um, with, with n uh, is, you know, the dimension of the target, that many functions. Um, and then there's the equation asserting it's, it's pseudo-holomorphic. Um, that's, that's, and that's more equations than, um, than you have functions to choose. So I'm, let, let, let me not try to calculate it right now. Of course, that's not really, I mean, the reason, I, uh, the, the reason that's not really a good answer is that you know, may, may, maybe the equations are a little bit redundant. So, so you have to be careful when, 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 if, if, you're, if, you, if you really want to justify that. Um. Oh, okay, I'm done with this page. Okay, so let let me try to talk about the local structure. The space. Of, of pseudo holomorphic maps. So let's, let's fix a base point. So um, a base point for this is just a pseudo holomorphic map U. And let's assume C is compact. So uh, locally, we can describe the moduli space as follows. So let's um, consider the space of um, maps from C, pullback of the tangent bundle, um, map that to of the pullback of the tangent bundle tensored with anti-holomorphic one forms. And we send a section, what? Well, a section of, um, a section of the pullback of the tangent bundle t gives me another, um, another nearby map. Um, I might write that nearby map as the exponential of, um, well, let me just write it as the exponential of C. Okay, so that gives you a new map nearby. Yes. No, C, C is yeah. So C, C is the um, C is the Riemann surface. It's a complex curve. So it's a, maybe the Riemann sphere. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, maybe it's the Riemann sphere or a torus or one of these things. Yes, yes. What is HS? HS. So HS, um, HS is the space of um, Sobolev regularity S um, functions. So, so HS of, say, of a manifold is the space of, well, okay, let's take smooth functions. And 
and um, let's equip it with the norm, which is the sum of, uh, of the L2 norms of the derivatives up to order k. That's um, that's a positive de definite inner product, and we take the completion. Um, uh, oh, hey, yeah, I, I, I messed this up, didn't I? I? I mean to take the completion with respect to that norm. So, so let me let me write it as um, um, just the completion. Okay, completion. I'm going to say M is compact. So I don't Okay, so uh, th th there, there are fractional versions of this space as you define using, you can define using the Fourier transform for any real value number in place of an, an integer k, but um, it doesn't really matter for now. k can be an integer. Yes, yeah, the complex conjugate vector space. So, um, the bar is the complex conjugate vector space. So V uh, is a complex vector space. Then V bar, well, as it's the same as V as sets, uh, but the, but the uh, multiplication is conjugated. So lambda bar is lambda bar. So, so this is um, this is the place where um, this anti uh, anti holomorphic component of the derivative naturally lies. So if you take um, take a real linear map and decompose it into a complex linear map plus an anti linear map, then the C linear map um, eu one zero. That's a section of G upper star Tx tensor over C with the, with the cotangent bundle and, and du01. Is a section of that. Okay, so I, I, I'm not done writing the map, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll finish it. So it's, it's uh, okay, so X with C, that's a, that's a smooth map. Uh, well, it's not a smooth map. It's a map n n nearby U. And I can take it, you know, the anti-holomorphic component of its derivative. So D of this, uh, 0, 1. And, and this thing, now it's not a section of of this bundle, it's a section of x c pullback tangent bundle of x tensor this. So I have to, uh, I have to do a parallel transport from x c to to u of that. Okay, so it, it doesn't really matter the details of what it, what exactly I wrote there. There's and many other ways to write it. The point is that um, this moduli space of holomorphic maps uh, is just the inverse image of zero uh, near near u. Or may, may, maybe maybe I should better say it like this: uh, it's an identification of, I guess, germs of topological spaces.
Okay, so this map is, is not a linear map. It has a, it has a linearization near zero. So this is derivative of D at zero. Oh, so it's, it's another map. And it's, it's an elliptic operator. So, um, as you already know from, from Francesco's uh, lecture this morning, since D is elliptic, uh, and C is compact, these together imply that This is a Fredholm operator. Okay, which means that the kernel is dimensional. Um, the image closed, and the co-kernel is dimensional. Okay, now there's a non, yes. For any, for this statement, any real number s. For this one, for this, okay, for this one. Um, yes, okay, what about the, I'll repeat the question. What values of s are, are permissible here? Yes, let's see, that's a good question. What values of S? Um, certainly if it's sufficiently large, you're fine, but what exact, why, why exactly do we need that? Um, well, okay, so first of all, the, you, you definitely need, um, yeah, so I think, um, so you definitely need um, HS to embed into continuous functions. Because if that's not true, then maybe I exponentiate and my manifold's non-compact and not complete or something. That wouldn't be good. So I definitely want a neighborhood of, of zero here um, to, to be uniformly small. I think that's all I need. Because I think as long as you have HS is inside C0, then HS is closed under various operations like post-composing with a smooth function. Um, but that's not actually, actually not all that easy to see. Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, <laughs> is it obvious whether D is elliptic? Uh, definitely not. Um, yeah, so I haven't even defined elliptic, so it's, it would be hard for it to be obvious before I, before I define it. Um, and e e e even then, um, I doubt it. I mean, you, you, okay, so, so this operator basically sends C to, okay, it's derivative and, and the zero one part of, part of it. Um, okay, so I, I can say, a, a little bit. Okay, for, for, for it to have any chance at all of being elliptic, the, the vector space in the domain and the vector space in the target better have the same dimension. In this case, they do, because this is a tensor over C with a one-dimensional complex vector space. I mean, e ellipticity amounts to saying that for any, any covector in, in C, um, basically the, the highest order term of, of this operator in the direction of that covector is an isomorphism between here and here. That's what ellipticity means. And um, so if you have, a, you have an operator like this, 
writing it all out in coordinates is a big mess. But, um, but writing down the, the leading order term is a little bit easier uh, because, because everything, everything else just dies. Um, so, so to verify ellipticity, you don't have to, you don't have to somehow r r write out everything that you would otherwise have to. Okay, so this Fred Holmes statement, basically what it says is that, um, okay, these two vector spaces are, are infinite dimensional, but this D, um, oh, oh, you know, other than sort of finitely many dimensions in the domain and the target, this D is just an isomorphism. So it sort of cancels the infinite dimensions of the domain with the infinite dimensions of the target. Now there's a nonlinear analog or nonlinear consequence, but it's really an analog of this of this Fred Holmness of the linearization um, about, about the, the nonlinear operator. So, consequence D, the bold D, is that um, there exists a Dimensional model of the shape um, Rn to Rm. So here's D down here. Where this is a transverse. fiber product. Um, and so, and, and, and the upshot of that, uh, that assertion is that D inverse of zero is F inverse of zero. And so this is a sort of finite dimensional presentation of our, of our method. Transverse. You're asking what this means? Yeah, so, um, so the derivative of, of bold D is, is little d. Um, so transverse means that um, um, the derivative of this map plus call that map Q, the derivative of uh, the derivative of Q from HS plus RM to H minus one is surjective. That's a reasonable statement since the co-kernel of D is, is finite dimensional, so that I only have to, um, I only need finitely many more dimensions to, to fill it out. So of course when I write HS and HS minus one, I mean those spaces over there, I'm just, I'm just, a, abbreviating for sake of time. Yes. Um, well, since it's a vector space, right, it's tangent space. The, yeah, so, so why is the domain of the derivative the same as the domain of the map? itself, um, and the reason is that, well, it's a vector space, so it's, it's tangent space if the origin is itself. I guess, I mean, the, the <laughs> yes. What do I mean by this statement? So there's a, there's a, there's a I guess, I, I think a pretty apparent map from in this direction. And that is, um, 
isomorphism. Right. Well, it means it's. It, so, so what? So what? What? What is this? What does this tell us about uh, the whole, the, the, the space of holomorphic maps, whole CX? And well, what does it tell us? It tells us that it's locally the zero set of a smooth function, whatever I mean, whatever structure that has. So, topologically, it doesn't have all that much structure. I mean, you, you can take any closed set in. Rn and express it as the zero set of a smooth function. Um, so you need a much more complicated structure to keep track of what, what, what exactly this, this chart tells you about it. People are asking lots of questions because I have a lot, a lot of pages left. Okay, that's good. Any other questions about this? Okay, so I, 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 can, I can say a little bit about the, the index here. As, as Francesco already said, the index of a The Fred Holm operator is the, the kernel, the bench of the kernel. Minus the dimension of the co-kernel. And if you deform the elliptic operator, these dimensions might jump, but the index stays the same. And in this um, case, the Tissinger index theorem will tell you that this is the same as, and I hope I write the Euler characteristic of C times the dimension of X plus twice the first Turing class of the pullback of the tangent bundle. Sorry? Yes, 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 indeed. Integrated over C. Okay, so so there, there are two situations to uh, to distinguish here. So you called regular or transverse. You have probably forgotten what U is by now. U was the base point in the space of the holomorphic maps, which we were talking about. So it's the base point around which we make this chart. So U is called regular or transverse. Uh, when D, or equivalently, F, Is surjective. Okay, so in, and 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 in this case, so if U is is regular, that means that this um, this moduli space locally is smooth manifold. you. That's, um, <clears throat> what is that? When, when df is surjective, f inverse of zero is a smooth manifold. F, f being a smooth map from, uh, from Rn to Rn. Um, so, so there's a little bit of problem with this, with this word is, I, I, I said here, Be, because I haven't 
Um, so far, I've told you what, it, what this is as a set. I've told you what it is as a topological space. So I guess what, what we've proven here is that it's, it's locally Euclidean. It's homeomorphic to Rn. But in order to say it's locally diffeomorphic to an open subset of Rn, I need already to have a smooth structure here. Um, question from the chat, is it easy to compute what f is explicitly? Um, I, I, I doubt it. Maybe in some, yeah, it, it seems rather difficult to, to, to make any sort of explicit. Um, at least not directly, you, the, the, the way I presented it, I don't know how you could directly figure out what F is. Um, once, I mean, okay, if, if, you, if you somehow have, have a complete, like, Kurinishi structure on the holomorphic map, uh, the, the space of holomorphic maps, and you calculate what the dimension of the tangent and obstruction spaces are, then maybe you could use that to deduce what, what the local model has to be in some, some simple case. But um, Okay, so, so there's a problem with this word is. Really what I should be saying is that this gives us a, a chart um, for, for a holomorphic, for this small size space. And, um, well, that's, a, that's one chart, depending on the base point U and depending on whatever choices went into the existence of, of my map F. But maybe um, I mean, there are lots of other points around U around which you could find a chart, and there are also uh, many more choices of F you could use. And um, so you have to know that, that these charts are compatible. Um, one thing I will say is that um, the, the, the locus of, of regular points is an open set. And that's not so hard to see. So, so why is that true? Why is the regular locus open? Well, it's the locus of, uh, regular just means this, this operator is surjective. So if you have a, a family of, of Fredholm operators, I claim that surjectivity is an open condition. Um, okay, I, I don't have a pithy one sentence uh, justification for that, but, but, but um, it's, true for, it's true for a finite dimensional um, a, a space of, of you know, linear maps from, between finite dimensional vector spaces. And you can reduce to that case. Okay. So, so, so this is the case when you is regular. And in general, all you have is this chart. So it's the fiber over zero of some smooth map. And that's called the Kurinishi chart. And as you might expect, it's, it's a bit more complicated to, um, to say what it means for, for, for charts of this form to be compatible between all the, all the possible ones that you might define. Okay, so, so why do these... charts... together anyway. Um, and the hint is, is, is to use universal properties. Um, so universal property is like um, the characterization I gave of a compact open topology. A map from arbitrary topological space into the set of continuous maps is continuous with respect to the compact open topology on the target, if and only if um, this map 
um, or the associated map from, from Z cross A to, to B um, is continuous. So, so let's declare that for, uh, so this is a category of smooth manifolds. So let's declare that for, for any smooth manifold on there's a natural bijection between smooth maps from Z um, to this uh, regular locus in, in of holomorphic curves. And um, smooth maps, C cross C to X, smooth towards the fibers are pseudo-holomorphic. and regular. Um, so that doesn't really look like a definition. It looks like a property. Sorry, question. Uh, yeah, so, so what, what, what is this? What is this vertical map here? Um, right. So let's begin over here. So the space of holomorphic curves is the zero set of this map, uh, bold D. Um, and I just sort of postulated the existence of a finite dimensional model of, of this cap map, bold D. Um, namely that there should be a, a, a fiber product diagram like this. And uh, in, in that case, uh, the inverse, I mean, the zero set of D is the same as the zero set of F. Um, so all I've written here is, is the zero set of, of F. This fiber product here is the zero set of, of F. So I, I, I shouldn't really put the entire space of holomorphic maps here. I mean, the, the, the open neighborhood of U on, on which we have this chart. Sorry? I say. Oh, yes, yes, the diagram is commutative. Right, yes, yeah, so, so, so this is, let's, okay, so let's, let's name the map. Name the map might be capital, uh, capital F. So then, um, um, And I can take f of a little z comma something from from c to x, and so that map um, should be regular, is is pseudo holomorphic and regular. The re regular slash transverse in, in in this sense. Um, or to the right, yeah, this sense. Yes, it's the definition. Yes, the, the, the question is, is, is this the definition of, 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 of the space? Is this, it looks like a property, but I'm gonna claim that it's a definition. Yes, yes, fixing a complex structure on C. Questions about this? Okay. Oh. 
So yes, as, as Paul pointed out, this doesn't really look like a definition. It looks like uh, a property. But I claim that, in fact, it is a definition. Or it's, 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 it's maybe 99% of the way there, too. It's, it's part, partially a definition. Maybe I shouldn't say 99%. OK. So we need a little bit of a abstract discussion. Okay, so let's let's let C be a, a category. So so let's let's uh, recall what what that means. So so C has a set of objects. And um, uh, for every pair of objects, uh, there's a set. Um, x, y, elements of Hom x, y are, are called morphisms. And finally, there's, uh, there's the data of how you can compose morphisms. And composition is associative. Okay, so, so you've, you're familiar with, with Many categories, smooth manifolds and, and smooth maps, abelian groups and group homomorphisms, groups and group homomorphisms, topological spaces and continuous maps. Um, the morphisms in a category are just sets, they don't have any other structure. Okay. So, from the opposite of C to the category of sets um, does what? It assigns uh, each uh, object of C set and to each map objects of C, a map, which I'll call F, upper star, from F of Y, F of X, and it's compatible with composition. Okay, so, so let me give some examples, because otherwise, um, who knows what any of this means. So the first example, uh, a little bit abstract. This is the functor which um, assigns uh, to an object the z, the set of maps from z to x. Okay, but let's let's look at some more, perhaps more interesting ones. So. Any topological space, let me perhaps assign the space of continuous, a set of continuous maps Z cross A to B. And here, here A and B are fixed. Topological spaces. So top is the category of topological spaces and continuous maps. Okay, so if I, if I have a continuous map from Z cross A to B, and a continuous map from Z prime to Z, then I can pull back and get a continuous map from, from Z prime cross A to B. So that's the, that's the pullback maps. Um, uh, 
I can I can do the same thing for for smooth manifolds, so smooth maps across A to B. Um, another one, Z maps to um, smooth embeddings of, uh, sorry, not smooth embeddings. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that one later. Um, isomorphism classes of uh, vector bundles. On Z, that pulls back. If I have a map from Z to Z prime, a vector bundle on Z prime pulls back to one on Z. functor of this form is called representable. So. Important definition, f, f a functor from the op set called representable. Isomorphic to HX for some X and C. Um, okay, and now what I claim is that um, this object X is um, is unique up to unique isomorphism if it exists. There's only one of them. If I give you a functor, it determines this object X uniquely in in as as canonical way as you can you 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 can want. Um, okay, so and 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 let's um, let's go back to what we were trying to do. Um, declaring that this right hand side is a definition of of well, declaring that this bijection here is a definition of this whole C X reg as a smooth manifold is exactly representing a functor. So over here, um, on the right-hand side, I have a functor on smooth manifolds. To every smooth manifold, you Z, you associate the set of, of maps um, like this, satisfying this condition. And, and what I'm saying is I want that to be of the form set of smooth map from Z to, to something. Okay. okay, so that's what it means to be Representable, then uh, representing object of F um, is a pair X in C and U in F of X. U because it's um, this is the universal family. Um, it's it's a pair such that for all uh, B and C map um, Z of X to F of Z given by sending F to F pullback of U um, is an isomorphism. So representing functors is perhaps something that you've uh, seen before if you've seen classifying spaces, which I believe you probably have. Sorry. Yeah, let's see. So. When, what about these other functors? Are they representable? So 
so this functor here. So if, if A is locally compact, this is representable, represented by a set of continuous maps with the compact open topology. If A is not locally compact, um, I think in, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that in general it's not representable. Um, What about this functor? Is this one representable? So smooth map from A to B. A and B are smooth manifolds. Um, yeah, so if A is a finite set, then it's represented by B to the A. And if A is not a finite set, then it's not representable. It's some, some big infinite dimensional thing. It's not representable by, by a smooth manifold. This one, um, isomorphism classes of vector bundles. Um, so, so there's a simple way of seeing it's not representable. Well, there are two ways of seeing it's not representable. I'll tell you the first one. I'll tell you the second one later if I have time. The first one is that, well, okay, if, if this is representable by something, then um, I can figure out what its points have to be by taking Z to be a point. So if I have a smooth manifold, the set of maps from a point to it is its underlying set. Um, so if this is representable by something, I can figure out the underlying set of that something by plugging in Z to be a point. Now if I plug in Z to be a point, what are the isomorphism of classes of vector bundles on a point? Well, okay, what, 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 I might as well write this functor as, as a disjoint union of a bunch of things and ask whether each one, for the rank, and, and ask whether each one is representable. If I fix the rank, then there's only one vector bundle on a point. Um, so then the only possibility of a representing object is a point, and it's pretty clear it doesn't represent this factor. Yes? Okay, so the question is, is um, can one define this holomorphic mapping space um, in, in the complex category, work in the complex category? So I guess, I guess you, right, so, so, so Z would be a complex manifold and you want whole CX to be a complex manifold such that we have this, this property where presumably this, this, this condition here would be that um, this map capital F is jointly is holomorphic. Um, I, I believe this is true, but it's sort of hard to track down References for it, maybe I haven't. I haven't tried so hard. Um, I think. I think there's some. I, mean, I think. I think this might actually be the context where the, in which the original work of Kurinishi was done to try to find mapping spaces between two um, complex analytic manifolds, between complex analytic spaces, and show that that is itself a complex analytic space. So the question is, what is this? What is this map? Yeah. So, right. So, so f is a f is a functor. So that means to any any map in our category from z to x, any element of hom z x. Um, you, you get a map from f of x to f of z. And I was sort of, in the, I, I didn't really say what that was in all these cases. It's sort of implicit. There's an obvious one to take. Um, but, but if I were really doing this right, I'd, I'd write it down. Right, so if I have a nice more for the class of vector bundles on Z and a map from Z prime to Z, I get a, I pull back to get a, something on Z prime, for example. All, all, all these pull back in a natural way. F. Okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll give examples of representable functors right now, but um, let me just, I, I, I don't think I can, I don't think I'm allowed to make this definition without 
stating the first result about it, which is that representing objects are unique up to unique isomorphism. So for any pair of representing objects x, u, x prime, u prime, there exists a unique map f of x to x prime, pulling back the universal family of of x prime to the universal family of x. Okay, so that's the, the sense in which if I give you the functor, then your the object is, is, is determined. Yes? Um, Let's see, that was a long question. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to repeat. I'm going to repeat it by saying, is, what's, the, are all, what's the relation between representable functors and forgetful functors? What, what about it? Yeah, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, this this is what I uh, yeah. I mean, many. I mean, it's definitely not. The, yeah, forgetful functors are representable, but um, it's sort of so. So we have um, a little bit of a wrong intuition, which tells us that if we have two abelian groups, then hom from A to B is an abelian group. Or if x and y are two vector spaces, then hom x y is a is a vector space. And if um, if x and y are topological spaces, then at least if they're sufficiently nice, I have this topological space of maps in the compact open topology that I just said. But, but that intuition is, isn't, ex we're sort of breaking that intuition when we do category theory this way. Our, our, our homs are always set. They're, they're not, they don't have extra structure a priori. We can try to give them extra structure by doing this um, sort of thing, but they don't, they don't begin with extra structure. And you see, um, for topological spaces, this, the, the, there's not always a topological space hom x y for all things. Okay, let, let, let me um, let me keep going a little bit. Let's see. So I've already done a few of these examples. Um, yeah, let me just do these two. So if we have the, um, the homotopy category of DW complexes and look at the functor um, sending x to um, the isomorphism classes of, of vector bundles on x. Okay, so we're familiar with classifying spaces in algebraic topology, and that tells us this functor is representable. So this functor. Represented by, and and when you represent a functor, you really should always think of it not as just an object, but as a pair. Right? It's a pair the object with the with the family. So so this is this infinite Grassmannian B O together with its uh, uh, tautological vector bundle. Right. So so this familiar state from from algebraic topology that homotopy class of maps uh, to be all is the same thing as an isomorphism class of vector bundles um, is, is exactly the statement that this functor is represented by this. Um, 
yeah, so if I mention this um, space of smooth maps from M to N, so if M and N are smooth manifolds, then I can look at the space C infinity M N um, space. This is a topological space. The space of smooth maps M to N. So this topology of C infinity convergence on compact subsets of M. So I'm sort of gonna go in the reverse direction here and ask what functor does this represent? Um, so this um, space, C infinity, Mn represents functor of um, what one might call relatively smooth maps z cross m to n. Right, so, so z is, a, is just a topological space. And here relatively smooth means, um, well, um, if, if you take sort of local Euclidean charts for m and n, and you differentiate um, arbitrarily many times in the m direction, you still get a jointly continuous map. Yeah, so, so relatively smooth uh, means that, um, so let's give this a name, call it capital F. So I take um, arbitrarily many derivatives in the M direction um, of F, um, and this is continuous for all, for any derivative you might take. And then, right, it's continuous on Z cross M. Okay, so, so there's probably an implicit question which um, you might be thinking but have not asked, which is why would anyone in their right mind prefer uh, to define an object of some category C um, by um, first defining a functor and then representing it. So there, there are two answers to this. Answer number one is that um, you're ca defining an object in, in your category C might actually be pretty complicated. So if C is just a topological, if, say, if, if C is just the category of topological spaces, then, well, okay, the set with the topology, it's, it's not so bad. But if it's, say, the category of smooth manifolds, then to define an object of C, um, <clears throat> well, you need a set with a topology and a smooth atlas. Um, and then, well, maybe, okay, maybe you're trying to define, say, like a, a scheme or something, and then um, has a structure sheet you have to define, or maybe a complex variety, you have to define it has a lot of structure. Or Kurinishi space has a lot of structure. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of categories can have kind of quite complicated objects. If 
defining object of C can be quite complex compared to defining um, uh, functor. Because what, what's a functor like this is just a bunch of sets that maps between them. That's all. That's, that's answer number one. The answer number two is that um, it's sort of related to answer number one. Maybe you say, even say it's a consequence of answer number one, but it's an important consequence, which is that um, functor often more obviously canonical. So what I'm defining, for example, if you're trying to study moduli spaces of pseudo-holomorphic curves, um, you know, I, I wrote that, I wrote that, um, that map, bold D. Um, and, and to write it, I had to choose a Sobolev completion. I had to choose that, that real parameter S. Uh, and someone might choose to, to, use, to work with some different Sobolev space uh, or some different Bonnach space of maps, not necessarily a Sobolev space. Um, and maybe you have different ways of, of, of uh, choosing those charts. Um, but this definition here of this, of, of this functor here is, is sort of uh, obviously canonical. I mean, there's, there's not much else I could say. I mean, there's one other thing I could say, which I could, I could sort of lower the regularity to say it's only CK or something. Yeah. 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 So, so this is. Um, yes. The question is how 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 will one ever prove a functor is representable? Um, and, and, and why is that any easier than just defining defining the object in the first place? Um, yeah. So that that indeed is a disadvantage to this approach. The answer. Um, the answers are the, are, are, the, are the advantage, and and the disadvantage is, well, you have to you have to prove the prove representability. So, um, one one reason the functor approach helps you is is that um, you can prove representability locally. So, um, what I what I wrote here to give a, a, a smooth a diffu smooth chart for the, the moduli space. If I prove that in in the neighborhood of that point U that, that that's a local chart that that um, chart I gave it if I prove that it represents this functor, then I've proven representability locally and and, and the transition the, the fact that it represents this fu functor which didn't depend on any of the data going into the chart tells me that any other chart. Um, Gives the same smooth structure, um, and, and so and so the smooth structure is locally packed together. Uh, yes. So okay, the question was just to just just to repeat, um, and <laughs> um, so so I I've, I've, this is even was was that what I was about to write down next. So let me. Write out a sketch, and then then it will be more easy easy to throw darts at it once it's up here on the board. Okay, so the okay, so this functor
is representable. Okay, so we already have um, a topological space. Okay, and, and it suffices to prove uh, representability locally. So that is, it suffices to define the open cover of the topological space and, um, and that each of the elements of that open cover uh, with the structure of a smooth manifold um, so that those smooth manifolds represent the functors of smooth maps landing in those open subsets. Okay, um, that's just because you know if, if I want to find a smooth structure on a on a on a topological manifold, I I can define it locally and 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 patch together as long as they agree on overlaps. And um, since they represent the same functor, they have to agree on overlaps. Okay, so so how are we going to prove representability locally? So. Um, Fix our, our base point. And, and so we get this map D. And okay, now I, I, I'm in some sense, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit because I'm really hiding a, a lot of the, a, a lot, well, a lot of the, a lot of the content is contained simply in the, the Banach space inverse function theorem or implicit function theorem, which tells me that since this is the differential is, is surjective, that this um, is, is a smooth manifold. So I'd, I'd, I'd rather not um, spend a lot of time explaining the bottom space implicit function theorem, but, but, but that's what it tells you, and that, that's a non-trivial statement. Okay. So given that, I want to try to argue that this, um, this zero, I think it's zero. So, sorry, oh, oh, here, yes. Um, well, right, so smooth manifold near... Uh, well, so it's, it's, it's zero in here, which, which corresponds to U in, in here. Okay, so I, I, wanna, I wanna argue, argue Things. Okay, so, so to show that um, if this smooth manifold represents this functor, amounts to um, amounts to the following claim. It's the claim that um, so so for, for for z smooth manifold, a map from z to this inverse image of zero is smooth. If and only if the associated map from cross C to X. That's what we're trying to show. And there's there's not that there's there's some content to it, but it's it's mostly just elliptic regularity. So um, so this direction. is, I claim, trivial. It's trivial in the sense that um, you, you have to you know what the smooth structure on this HS space is. But, but, um, um, and this direction 
elliptic regularity. So a priori, a smooth map from z to d inverse of 0. Oh, it's just a smooth map from z to this hs space. Um, so, so let's mark a so smooth map. Is what um, say hs of yeah hs of c is a smooth is a map from z across r to c um, where the derivatives in the z direction um, all exist and are in hs of c. I guess I really should call that e to hs of c is continuous. So it's sort of smooth in the horizontal direction, in the z direction, and the hs regularity in, in, the, in the c direction. And the elliptic regularity allows you to upgrade that to smoothness in the, in the c direction, joint smoothness. So, um, yeah, my, my, my point here is mostly that this is, this is chasing definitions here. Um, it is. Um, but it's a nice way of showing that the, the, the charts, um, the local smooth charts patch together uh, nicely. And if you want some sort of more exotic structure on the moduli space like a Kurinishi structure, then you're, you're essentially a, a, obliged to do it this way unless, unless you want to have some nightmare of patching things together. I had more stuff on my notes, but this is a nice stopping point, so I will stop here. Repeat, repeat the question. So the, the question, the, well, the statement, the question is, is it the case that um, the reason we do this is that we get a, we had this argument to uh, find a, a local smooth structure, and um, then we say, uh, well, that local smooth structure represents this functor, and the functor was just this canonical thing, and therefore the, the local smooth structures are all the same. They patch together, and the answer is yes. That, that is what we do. Does, does what work in any other category? Uh, so the, the question is, can we axiomatize locality in any category, and, and, and can we make uh, representability a local notion? Yeah, so there's this, this really general notion of a Grotendieck topology on a category, um, and it allows you to make sense of sheaves and stacks on the category. Um, and um, yeah, re re representability is, um, well, lo locality, oh, okay, so yeah, re representability being a local statement um, amounts to some, uh, so, some being able to glue objects together. And topological spaces are easy to glue together. But if you, if you go to algebraic varieties and try to start to glue them in bad ways, then, um, then you get more exotic things like algebraic spaces. And so, so in that context, representability is not local. Yeah. Um, The question is, is, is everything just chasing definitions? Um, 
c c certainly not everything that you care about, but maybe, uh, maybe a lot of the foundation, certainly. But it, it's in the eye of the beholder some, in some sense. So the question is, if the moduli space is not transverse, then, then, then can, you, can you write down this, um, still write down a moduli functor and try to, try to represent it by something? Um, yes, I, I'm, 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 I believe the answer is yes. You can, you can just write down, I mean, you can write down basically the same thing. You have, so, so it's represented by a Kurinishi space, and so you need to write, allow Z to be a Kurinishi space and say what it means for map from Z cross C to X to be fiber-wise holomorphic when, when Z is a Kurinishi space. So if you, if, you, if you can make sense of that, then, um, then you can make sense of the functor and um, you can chase some more definitions and, and prove it's representable. So the question is we've We've, we've proved local representability. We give the local representing objects. What's the global representing object? Right, so the global representing object is a smooth manifold. So, so how do you define a smooth manifold? Well, it's a topological space with an atlas of charts. So, so here's the topological space. And what are the charts? Well, the charts are the same, the same charts that I, that I uh, defined much earlier. The content is that um, the transition maps between the charts are smooth, and that's somehow some fact we proved uh, here. And then if you're really pedantic and you define your manifolds to be, um, you know, topological spaces equipped with an, a maximal atlas of, of charts, then you add in other things that's compatible with, the, with, with these. Um, so the question is, um, what, is, what is really being defined when we define something by a, a representing a functor? Well, I mean, so, so first we define the functor and then we, and then we argue the functor is representable. And that, that, that's just a property, but, but it gives us a definition of that object. It, it's, I, I've, I admit I've, I've presented things in a slightly, well, maybe more than slightly confusing way. Um, because, because I sort of started with, you know, the, 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 the problem is there, there are lots of things we want to call whole CXY. There's the set, there's the set with the topology, then, then there's this um, smooth manifold, which is the object representing uh, this functor. So I sort of said, well, we, we already know we have a topological space, and, and that's what we're going to use to represent the functor. And so it, it, it's not circular, despite, just, despite the notation. <laughs> 